Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am the Motorcycle Rescuer and this is Motorcycle Rescuer. Now, Nat from Nat Knacker's Yard very kindly offered to give me a haircut, which I accepted. Although I do wish he wasn't topless and that he wouldn't keep trying to touch me in inappropriate places. So yes, welcome back. Um, I wanted to clarify something about a comment I made in the last video or the one before that. Um, I talked about someone commenting about me wearing gloves or something similar. Um, I want to make it very clear that one or two watchers said something similar within the, the recent weeks, but they weren't the comments I was talking about. The comments I was talking about were abusive, they were rude, they were from people who weren't interested in the channel. They just watch snippets and then tell me how rubbish I am at, at my job. So um, I do want to separate kind-hearted, genuine from the heart, thoughts, feeling and advice from you lot to abusive advice. Them kinds of comments are deleted and blocked immediately. Not interested. They're not interested in me or us. I'm not interested in them. So please don't feel like you can't be, um, you know, constructively criticise the channel you always can and a lot of the work I'm doing today has come from your thoughts feelings and suggestions in the comments so I've got here a touch earlier today because I thought I'm letting myself down by not um, looking at my own Harley at the moment at the moment it idles but it won't run once you pull throttle it cuts out and this is after it overheated and basically ran out of fuel it just i just sipped it back here then let it sit for a couple of days then got it down to the fuel station put in fuel um and it caught it's had problems since then um I, it's not a compression issue at all it runs beautifully it idles beautifully and it will run while the choke is on my guess is it's the spark plugs they've blackened or something where it just way overheated it burst its coolant and um, it was running very, very hot that day. So my guess is the spark plugs need a change and it generally needs a service. When I eventually get to it, which will be probably next weekend, I'm going to buy the ice coolant. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's called ice coolant. It's designed to be extra cool. And I'll let you guys know how that goes with this bike. Because this bike did creep up and get hot at times and that did wind me up. It's a liquid called Harley. It's not just air-cooled. So it should never get too hot. Um, if the ice coolant still doesn't quite, you know, work for it and it gets a bit too hot for my liking, I'll put a switch onto the fan that I can control myself. Um, which is a bit annoying because the fan was working when it was overheating that time. But uh, once the coolant pipes had kind of kicked it, they spat the um, leak out. Obviously, we, we had an issue there. Um, other things today that you guys that came from you guys uh the old um piaggio fly i think it's this one uh you guys suggested a couple of things one was to um check the fuel pump that's a good idea i mean i i, I can almost guarantee you i did but i want to check it again for my peace of mind um the other suggestion was try one more carb now i do have the carb that i put on that that i can put on that so i can try one more carb as well um uh, you clarified whether the throttle was wide open. Throttle is always wide open when you do a compression test. Although, as someone pointed out, these are diaphragm carbs. Um, so, you don't get the full flow. But saying that, you do. You do. Um, even with a diaphragm carb, full throttle, you will get the right reading. That's something I've known for a long time and clarified recently. Uh, Gary's bike's fine. I just, um, I'm just borrowing it, which is great because I can ride it as well. Uh, good. And what else? The, uh, I wanted to, the Fesper is, is brilliant, I love it. I wanted to get on to the AP50, which is, where is it? It's that one in there, because I want to check the Fariator. Um, 
I think it holding itself back slightly isn't about the carb at this stage. I think the ferriator system is probably all gunked up and seized up a bit. Um, and my guess is that cleaning all that up, freeing it all up, checking the rollers aren't flat, will sort it out. So, a uh, busy day today. Possibly a couple of visitors. Possibly John. I think he's driven back from Bristol. Um, possibly John. Possibly someone else. Now, this is interesting. When I sold the Farago to someone uh, a couple of months back, they weren't happy with it. That They swore down that I didn't tell them it was Ulez. Um, now, I, I, I swear... I absolutely had that conversation and John was there and saw it as well. Um, he knew it wasn't ULES compliant and he lived outside of the ULES area. So he said that wasn't a problem at all. Then a couple of weeks later he moaned because it wasn't ULES compliant. He was trying it. Um, and I did try and help him out but he actually got abusive again. Anyway, long story short, that bike may be coming back today. I think he wants the racing pipes I've got in there which will be great because the extra 100 quid or whatever they are will help um good so lots to do i'm gonna have a little look at the harley because i neglect it all the time i want to at least pop the spark plugs and see what i've got going on so i don't know how well you can see it but this is what would have caused a running issue not only is it quite black and dirty but it had a piece in between which which would have affected the spark of course i'm going to be getting a full service kit soon um, but for now I do want my bike running so I'm going to be cleaning these up, chucking them back in and we'll know straight away once the choke is off if it's back to good or not. If it is, I need to fill it up with water at this stage to see that all the pipes are holding because at some point something split loose and I need to know where that is, what pipe it was. Um, it, it appeared to be down here, it could be a natural overflow pipe, I think it probably was. So I think the system is sealed, but before I put in the coolant I've got now, um, I would want to top it up and make sure it is holding the fluids. So it just occurred to me that I've never looked at the air filter in here. Um, Daniel, group expert um, and YouTube member, when I say group expert, I mean part of the Facebook group, absolute expert in or anything motorcycle related as well as a lot of the other guys. Um, so if anyone would like to join that channel, uh, you're more than welcome to. It is a small community, it is extremely polite and positive. Um, we don't accept any crap, any spam, any rudeness. We're all a really nice bunch. Uh, if anyone would like to jump in on that, please do. Just follow the rules. Um, Daniel, I believe this is quite clearly a uh, standard. I mean, it looks quite high flow. That looks like fiberglass to me. It's really interesting. Um, I'd like your advice on whether I should put high flow in. Um, I think you will probably say no because I've already got the Fintz and Hines comp series and uh, it's not running any kind of um, piggyback ECU. So it will be running, well, it doesn't look like it's running rich actually by the look of the plugs, but I know that by putting in a high flow it would. Uh, I think I know what you're probably gonna say. You're gonna say you can put high flow in, but you need to buy a piggy bank. Uh, dino jet or similar so uh, yeah I still want to hear your advice on that actually um, and I don't even know kind of what I'm looking at here from being honest guys I just thought have a little look um, it looks fairly clean and new to me remember this bikes only done 2,000 miles from new I don't want to spray too much into it I can spray a little bit of carb cleaner it won't hurt but um, I don't want to go too nuts uh, just having a little look in here it doesn't hurt just to get a bit of cleaner on the bottoms here of the um, butterflies, just because they can get a little bit dirty. You can, uh, you, can you see it down there? And if it builds up enough dirt, then the bike will be idling a touch higher than it should. So I'll get a little bit of a uh, clean in there, but nothing major at all. Um, and my hope is that once these plugs are back in and clean, if it was back in and clean, well, yeah, uh, that it will run as it should like normal. I will, of course, top up the coolant. So guys, all that bit's done, topped up, coolant's in there now, seems to be holding, it's burped, air filter's back in, plugs are back in. I'll know if it's running okay because after a minute or two when the um, choke is off, it won't rev, it won't throttle. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to film it, no point wasting two or three minutes of your lives, but I'm going to see it and then of course I'll take it for a spin and I'll know straight away how it is. Um, then ideally I'll let it get to temperature 
um, and just check that the fan is kicking in at this stage. Just check that it's not just dramatically overheating. So annoyingly, it's going to be sitting for 10 minutes or so, not on camera. But ultimately, I do want to know that it's doing what it needs to do. All right, guys, I'm going to give that a couple of minutes to warm itself up. Got John over here changing the throttle cables on his Triumph. And I'm going to pull out the Lex Moto now just to drain the tank and see what we're looking at there. Um, problem with the cables on the Triumph is that we've kind of adapted these here for the Makuni carbs, but we really need the top hats and they look like this. Um, let me show you that there, that, oh, there, this side here. So it should just slide in and sit because with the needle lifted one up, it ran beautifully but the lowest idle was too high because this was too high, if that makes sense. So I think we're gonna go one clip up again with the needle or down, down and put the hats on I think and then get all the balancing done. And my guess, my hope is that this runs absolutely beautifully today. Uh, so update, the Harley, I used um, some fuel injector cleaner in there and I changed both spark plugs now, brand new ones from the local car shop. Now them spark plugs, just because they said Harley Davidson, were 23 pounds each on eBay, guys. I went to my local car parts shop, I got both spark plugs and the fuel injector cleaner, which is down here, for 22 pounds. So sometimes your local place is better. Um, to be fair, there's a lot of coolant on the floor, you can see it. It's riding now, it's revving and riding now which it wasn't doing earlier it was stalling so it has cleaned itself out but we found one of the pipes that let go when it overheated before we found that pipe and it's under this side and it's just it's the clip it's the clip it's up in here and it's the clip that's gone that's where it's spraying out so that's an easy fix but then I think if I can find it and work it out I potentially it'll be in here I potentially want to put a switch on here for the fan because I think it's getting too hot before the fan comes in and I don't like that um, I don't like fan switches either but this kind of bike I think needs it I'd rather the fan kick on a bit earlier rather than a bit later so I think I might mess with that if I've got literally got a switch in there then I'll do that for peace of mind so um, by the end of today this could be up and running two brand new spark plugs I found the pipe that let loose and uh, and the fuel injector cleaner just to clean it out because remember I ran it it basically ran out of petrol if there's any little bits of crap in the tank it would have sucked it through um, we're still working on these uh, carbs here they're, they're much better that's how it's meant to be now seated like that and with the clip in the right place which I think it's not I think we've gone for medium I think it ran best on its lowest setting and that's fine we can change that fairly easily now in fact John we can because we've just done that um, so we're gonna kind of do some fine tuning get, get them opening at the same time now and then I think this will be back up to scratch which one's pulling first it looks like the right one's pulling yeah. first is it easier can we pop lift this seat because we might get a better eye line there you go, right, there's the eye line. So if you kind of tip all the foil, John. Yeah, so right carb opens, yeah, is much more responsive than left carb. So you've got to take some slack out of the left. But not too much to lift it, we don't want to lift it. Um, try that on the foil there, John. Ah, there you go, so hang on a minute. I think, come back down a touch with that one, John. I think you might have gone, you might have lifted. The left one looks higher to me, but I won't be able to, we'll have to get a feeler gauge in there. The left one looks like it's sitting higher, and these don't have, oh, they do. No, that's air fuel screw. Do these have, these don't have adjustments, do they? All the adjustments done up there. I'd need to check. I'm going to check. Actually, there you, there you go, John. That is spot on. Yeah. 
they look the same and they're both moving at exactly the same time. You guys, we're looking at the in there look. So as John twists, John go again one more. See, they both open, there you go, at exactly the same time. What we need to check now is that they're both the same size. So we're gonna use little pieces of wire or something for that. All right, guys, so um, I took out Aiden's 300 today. Now, here's my thoughts and feelings. Anyone who knows me or has watched me for a while knows that one of my key bikes, one of my loved bikes, is the uh, Galera Runner SP180. Yes, two-stroke. Um, and actually, they're kind of three to four grand now. None of them are ULES compliant. They're quick and they're great. But after riding this, I'm going to take it off my list because... This does exactly the same thing. This is a modern version, better on fuel economy, four-stroke more reliable, feels exactly the same as the two-stroke 180. So I think I'm going to scrap the Galera Runner 180 SP off my list. Um, it doesn't mean I'm putting this on my list, but it feels great knowing that there's a bike out there that will tick them same boxes. Um, a stunning bike, uh, not sold yet, and it's at a very, very reasonable price. So that's interesting. Over here, um, I fired the bike up on the new spark plugs and it, 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 it poured out its coolant again. So I've gone over the bike and I've looked for the weak link and I found it and it was this pipe here. It was this top pipe here and it was leaking out the top. Just, just from the pressure, it was using the old clip system. Um, I don't know what they're called, I've never really used them. Where is it? Um, you know what I mean though, it's one that you put on with the special pliers. Uh, so I think I've done the job now to do that. Um, I think I should be able to throw this all back together and it should be up and running and running because it was revving well, but it, it overheated and kicked up its coolant. Now, if I'm feeling like I want or need to, I could splice into here. There should be two wires in there and I could run a wire up to a switch on the bar which I've probably got, I've probably got the switch. Um, earlier I didn't see the fan kick on, which is a bit annoying, uh, but that's because this was kicking out coolant before it got to that stage. It didn't overheat on there, if that makes sense. It was just kicking out coolant at an earlier stage. So um, I need to kind of get it fired up, really, and we, so that we can see again what's going on with it. So it needs to fire up. I need to put the tank back on. I need to fire it all up, get it all kind of running and idling again, and we need to see how it is, and then see if the fan kicks in. Earlier, it spat out fluid before the fan had a chance to kick in. Okay, uh, just to clarify that. Um, tomorrow's video, we're gonna be looking at Lex Moto again. We've got the, uh, the new throttle is here, so I can look at that again, which is pretty cool. And I'll do what I said earlier, which is look at the um, Piaggio Fly again but this has taken up my time and i don't feel bad about that because this is my bike i should be jumping on this and i should be off and riding on it but i haven't been able to for a couple of weeks because these jobs needed doing so we're back on it sounds great but last time it took five to ten minutes before the pipe split um what we need to see is that the fan kicks on at a certain time before the light comes on up there. Uh, that's what we kind of are looking at. I have topped up all the coolant. but I need to see that fan come on. I'm going 
going to give it a minute. I need to see the fan come on for my piece of advice. It's been a couple of minutes. Um, we're not showing temperatures up there. The fan's not on yet. Not yet. been maybe nine or ten minutes now guys it's it's not overheating on here but the fan hasn't been on yet I want to see the fan on otherwise I'm nervous I need to see it spin oh I need the warning up here I need something I'm gonna wait another five minutes I don't want to idle it any longer guys, 15 minutes, no fan but no warning. Um... Ooh, here, I can hear, what did I hear? Ah look, that was from the coolant tank. What does that tell me? That tells me, ah, uh, what does that tell me and where did that come? That kind of spat back from the overflow. Cause that's the only spot down there yeah there it is um man what does that tell me i need to test the fan on this i'm not happy with it it don't get me wrong it didn't overheat but uh, i don't get it i want to be able to control the coolant if it's warm i don't care if that fan spins the whole time um except for the warming up you know I'm going to have to consider throwing a switch on there, guys. I think that's the way forward. Uh, also, I mean, I can test the fan then myself by uh, by putting the switch on. It's the only way for me to go here, guys. Not necessarily going to do it now, because um, I don't know if I've got a switch. Let me have a look and see if I've got a switch. little bit of coolant overflow that's yeah. i mean i could have topped it up too much but oh yeah look you top it up so well it's gonna it's it's a bit higher than it should be um was it warm when i topped it up i don't know uh don't know i'm gonna see if i've got a switch an obvious switch that'll work otherwise i'll get one from halford tomorrow and we'll do that